Hail and welcome to the frigid north of Faerun. And if I've pronounced that right, it's because I'm a, a geek who's been into AD&D and Dungeons and Dragons for many, many, many years. Um, today on Indie Crit, we're getting stuck into Icewind Dale and uh, reviewing the campaign. Yeah, yeah um, you ran, I it. ran it. I ran it. Um, we, I ran it for probably about a year, not weekly, bi-weekly sessions. Maybe just over a year, actually. Fort fortnightly. Fortnightly, not bi-weekly. Yes, sorry. Fortnightly. Right, it's all right. I mean, fortnightly probably to to some people is going to mean we did it on a computer game, right? Yeah. <laughs> and it was yeah, but um, so we're going to do like like we did with our previous review. We're going to do a kind of quick synopsis that is spoiler free, so that you know get an idea whether you should run it, play it, etc. And then we'll go to more depth um, with some spoilers. Um, so if you know if you don't want the spoilers, stop when we say, um, and you won't and you won't get them. Uh, I mean, you played it. You, you played I a did. couple of characters in it. <laughs> yeah, he killed me once. Just tried. Yeah. He tried to get me the second time. But you know how it is with the DM. They can kill you any time they like. But there's there's the time when they decide, oh, you're going a bit too full of yourself. Um, so it's an interesting one. Mm. To start with, it's an open world. Yeah. Uh, so long as you're stuck in the frozen north. But I mean, it worked. That was really good. I really, really enjoyed it. Felt very role. So I, I love role playing where it's not just about combat. Mm. I like combat from time to time. I prefer combat to be quite challenging. Yeah. Um, and then the rest of the time, I'm interested in other resolutions. So I mean, for, for those for those who don't know the story, um, the the North has been um, under the spell of a, a demigod for some time. Has been has been frozen solid, uh, and the heroes are there to, to, to seek an end to this rhyme of the Frost Maiden, Oriel, who's the, who's the Frost Maiden. Uh, heroes. Heroes, <laughs> yeah. Um, and it starts <laughs> off kind of you can, there's a there's the Ten Towns area of Icewind Dale. Uh, which people who are, who know the property, you know, know the IP and know um, Faerun and the North know about Ten Towns. You know, it's the area where a lot of the early Dritz novel, novels are set. Yeah, R.A. Salvatore's work yeah. has been heavily. Yeah. Um, so there were a couple of PC games as well, weren't there? There were indeed. You start in any one of the Ten Towns, there's the various starting quests, etc. And it's an open world exploration to try and find out what's going on with some other stories woven in. Woven into it. There's some very fun little yeah. adventures. Uh, can't spoil them. It then goes on to be more of a show. I would say, without spoiling, there's a chase element. Yep. There's a, the, and then finally, there's, there's a chase more element, of a, sort of a dungeon fetch crawl, quest. and a fetch quest at the end. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and a big denouement with, like, you know, yeah. I can imagine quite a big, difficult fight. Yeah. Although. You, there are ingenious ways well. round. Yeah, you, you as a group handled incredibly well. Um, I've got damn ingenious players. But so I mean, I I think I think it starts really strong and it tails off towards the end. Uh, I would run it again. Um, I would spend a lot more time on the first section, a lot more time and a lot more time, and maybe have the denouement happening in a different way, and maybe just use the. The caverns, the ice caverns, and the buried city, as different adventures, perhaps. There is a section of it which is a player is just like, this is the frustrating side of dungeon crawls. Oh, if you get off on that, mm. although I'm old school in one sense, not in another. I, I, Dungeons and Dragons Five E is a system which I often think is a little bit too safe because of it. Not that the way you, you run it, to be fair, but but there's definitely a callback to the old school way of dungeon crawling, but it's extremely frustrating and it doesn't fit the rest. Yeah. So you, just before warned, that'll be the point where you might well lose your player character. Uh, <laughs> you might well lose your player if you're DMing it wrong. DMing it wrong. But I mean... I, I think it's actually for a dungeon crawl, it's a really good dungeon crawl. It just doesn't fit in with the rest of what's come before, is my, my issue with it. Yes, if I knew I was going into a dungeon crawl, like when you ran Tomb of Horrors, yeah. for example, 
great. Okay, cool. That's what I know what I'm getting and I'm happy with that. When I thought it was an open world and we're doing this quest and that we're doing all these things and then suddenly I'm in a sort of quite hardcore dungeon crawl section, it, that, it's like, it just, it, it totally didn't work yeah. for me. Anyway, yeah, yeah. as a player, you may be very different from me. So I would enjoy it. I, I, I wouldn't play it again because I now know it, but, but I'm glad I've played it. And, uh, I'm glad I put a year into playing. Yeah, we, we had fun. I didn't lose any players along the way. You know, um, everybody stuck it out from the much as you so. tried. Oh no, players! players yeah. Sorry. Um, <laughs> the, the player feedback is very much the same as we've given you here. Is that the, the first part was the really strong part, and um, it got a little monotonous later on. Um, so that's our, our kind of quick review. You will have fun playing Icewind Dale. You will have fun yeah. with the survival mechanics. You will have fun with the with the quests, with all the side quests, the various NPCs that you're going to run into. As a DM, you will have great fun. There's, you know, in the spoilers. Yeah, the side quests were, in many ways, the better part. Yeah. To be honest, yeah, I think they're the strongest part of it, and made you care enough to actually want to get, to bother with the main quest, which is not as compelling. I'm sorry, just I mean it isn't. Yeah, um, as many of the side quests are. So that, that's our, so that's that's our a... quick overview. Um, from here on mm. out, there's going to be spoilers. So if you don't want spoilers, then I suggest you, you find something else to do. So have a little moment, think whether you want the spoilers or not. Still here? Cool, if you're still here, then you want the spoilers. It's not our fault. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so, it's... The, the first part is huge fun. You know, the first few chapters... Um, and there's a you know there's kind of a, a big side quest with this um, insane Dwergar who's trying to take over the Dale who has created this magical dragon made of something called Shardalin which is a, a magical crystal infused with dark powers. Um, he's made this big Shardalin dragon and he's going to destroy ten towns with it. And you know that's one of the big side quests. There's lots of little side quests in that as well. Yeah, it's hugely enjoyable to weave all those stories together to see the players trying to work out what's important, what's not important, or even just what's important to them, and to get a feel for what, what it is the play is like. Um, I never I never once thought I'd get to role-play an awakened plesiosaur. And I did. And an awakened moose. You did. You know, the, yes. it, it, it tests you. as it does. Test we you were trying to find some more awakened <laughs> animals, but we <laughs> Come on, let's the game. Someone needs to take speak with animals so we can force him to, to role play a squirrel. Uh, we have, yeah, moose and moose and pleasure sauce. Uh, the pleasure sauce sticks out in my mind because we that could have been set up as a combat, yeah. And I don't know how it was written, but the way we played it, we befriended the thing and sort of you know, certainly the sensible option. I think we gave it a name, it. didn't we? Yeah, yeah, I... we named named him. Or her, uh, I can't remember that detail, but you know, and, yeah. and and it was like, oh, actually, quite useful to us subsequently. So there's, there's um, a subplot that's... going underneath that there's a uh, there's a, a druid who worships Oriel who's going around awakening animals to cause chaos in ten towns. Um, yeah, and that, that's um, where this awakened plesias all comes from. And very much the sensible way to deal with it is to befriend it, because at that level, mm -hmm. it's a very early quest. At that level, you're probably going to die if you try and. Fight. Fight it particularly on frozen water, you know, in its element. Um, the moose. I don't know if we could have dealt with that differently, but we didn't. We killed that yeah. pretty quickly. <laughs> um, followed by basically curb stomping the druid. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and there's a whole load of other little side quests thrown in. Um, there's a, a little visit to a hag's lair. There's a lovely encounter with some harpies. Anybody who knows me knows I love a half or four, so that was good fun. We're not talking about your dating life, mate. Um, <laughs> right, sorry, um, that was inappropriate. There was a whole load of side quests that you didn't get to do. Some you knew about that you just didn't get because of the, yeah. this kind of forced time pressure on the story that you didn't get around yeah, to I doing. Yeah, I think... You, you should have ignored that, mm. but then we'd probably still be doing Icewind Dale. But I mean, it, it, so there was a thing with the little magical creatures, I can't remember their name. Um, yeah, the uh, Chingwa. Chingwa. Yeah. And they were, because they didn't communicate in a normal way, that was a great bit of role play. Um, yeah. Opportunity. And we, we we sort of did, slightly did the wrong thing, slightly did the right thing, made up for it. Uh, and it was all in line with bringing out uh, alignments, perhaps out of favour. But uh, I was very much an evil character. Yeah. 
who thinks that he was serving the greater good. Yeah. So <laughs> that, was, greater good. that was a great opportunity for me. Uh, the greater good. Yeah, exactly. It was very much like uh, you know, Warlock Pact of the Fiend, thinking the Fiend is in fact some kind of bright creature of light. And it, that gave me all these wonderful opportunities to roleplay. And these little side quests were were wonderful yeah. fun for that. But then it got more and more combat oriented. Yeah. It seemed to me. Yeah, and it, it became um, more and more. So that I thought the sudden blight quest was really good. The the side quest was really good. You took yeah, that was that awesome. Really quickly when you got to it. Perhaps there was a mistake on the rules there, um, but you still would have taken it down really quickly. You know, you had a you had a plan. I'm a I'm a DM who will reward. I don't always do rule of call, but if there's thought been put into a plan and it seems workable, I will allow, generally allow it to work to an extent, and it worked really well. You know, you guys set it up really well. Um, Unfortunately, by that point, that was it wasn't called the Ten Towns anymore. No, no, it was, it was called the, the One the Town. One town yeah. <laughs> and that's that's uh, uh, and that's. I guess my criticism of that side quest would be it's set up in such a way that you can't save the towns. You know, there's no. At best, you could probably save three out of the ten. Don't tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we saved one. Yeah. But we basically one-shotted a dragon. And you evacuated the other towns, or most of it's the true. other towns, so you saved a lot of people. The important, the important people. Yeah. The one, the, the towns we liked who'd been nice to us earlier. And then, and then there's a visit. <laughs> the, the party has to go to Oriel's Island to get this document, yeah. which has the rhyme of the Frost Maiden in it, the poem that opens the way to the um, crashed nethery city that's underneath the glacier. But we were with new characters at this point yeah. because a side quest after the big dragon side quest killed us. Yeah. We got TPK'd on something that we did not expect. Uh, yeah. I mean, she, she said he, several ooh. times, "Go away, or I'm going to kill you all." <laughs> yes, yes, I know that. But I had just been told by my patron I had to take her out, basically. Yeah, so. yeah, and that was that was an interesting choice. We could have because of the patron you chose and who this person yeah, yeah. served. So it was, I, uh, I also think that, uh, that 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 there was a bit of a breakdown in party dynamics. There, where I think we would have had that combat if we had stuck to our previous how tightly, yeah. how well we gelled in combat. Yeah, perhaps, perhaps. So. Every player, every party will have times when you're just not yeah. cohesive, yeah. <laughs> and, and some DMs will kill you when that opportunity arises. Yes. <laughs> and so there's this, there's the quest to go to Oriel's Island and get this rhyme of the Frost Maiden, um, and encounter um, an item called the Professor Orb, which one of the NPCs wants to get back. One of your favourite characters, I believe, Professor Scant. I mean, it, you know. I didn't call him Professor Scant. <laughs> I had a different name for him. Um, Four letters long really, and inappropriate for this channel. A really enjoyable character to play, particularly when I knew it wound up one of the characters. Um, well, I controlled it quite well because once I got my hands on it, I was like, "If you don't answer my question in like <laughs> short things, I'm going to break you." Uh, <laughs> anyway. that, so that's a bit. So I actually added in an extra side quest into that. Um, the whole so there's some stuff on DMs Guild um, which expands the open world aspect of Icewind Dale. Um, so the whole is that something additional we have to pay for? Is that yeah, free? no, you have to pay for it additionally. Pay for it. So okay. I did. I did add some some additional stuff in there, um, and there's some other. If I'm at it again, there's other things on there that I would that I would definitely add in. I mean, that it's like three or four dollars or something. I think for this for this site. Okay, so quite a reasonable. Um, so the whole underwater bit with the Sahagwin and stuff is not in the original book. Um, if you're a DM, I highly recommend adding it in. It was a really good, fun part of the adventure. Um, again, yeah, that was enjoyable. Again, getting the party to deal with, you know, being out of their depth, quite literally. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a good look. So, yeah. But then the question is, why don't you just hang around and kill O'Real at that point? And it's because you're not the party isn't quite powerful enough yet. With the time scale that you're supposed to go by by the book and the leveling up you're supposed to go by by the book. Yes. Um, could you have taken her out? No. Um, you could have. So the one of her. Forms. Yeah. So she has three forms. You certainly could have taken out the first. Form. This is the problem. Um, and it's just it's just a bit of a it's just a bit of a pointless side quest, really. Um, which is why I fleshed it out a little bit to make it a bit more interesting. Uh, there was some good role playing in there. There was some good role playing with a um, a frost giant. 
Um, who needed an honourable death? Who, who needed so an honourable death? I'm more than happy was, to ab oblige. Yeah, there was there was some, some good bits in there, but it was kind of like, why are we here? And we just have to run away. You know, we can only creep around when she's not on the island because she has to go and cast the spell every night. So, so we we as a group, for some reason, mm, decided to go in and there's these tests of the priesthood so you can get access yeah. to this spell or the thing that opens where you need to go so it's kind of a bit of a doorstop moment if you don't succeed I should think yeah. uh, and for some reason we rushed that bit um, yeah I'm not going to say anything more about that simply that that was an issue so as a, a, the, for the DM running it be aware that if your players aren't and when we, we, considering how experienced and savvy as players we sometimes are, uh, I'm a bit surprised we didn't go around and examine and explore. But perhaps we felt that there was, oh, we'll just handle this. Was the attitude? Yeah. And it, I think it was because it was it it wasn't quite so obvious to us that this was a test that you needed to have certain rules that you knew before you went into it. Um, I don't know, maybe that that for obviously for idiots like us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. to spell it out um, there, there were so that clues that were available that you didn't necessarily find or pick up on um, no, which made it quite a bit more yeah, tricky yeah. Um, but that, that's interesting because there was a mechanic for that on, on who needs to pass which tests um, you know you, okay. you need one person who's passed all the tests essentially you don't all need to have passed all of the tests um, so as long as somebody has passed all the tests they can open the door and everyone can go in some of the but tests were very much a case no. of well the thing so the problem with those tests were that some of them were or seemed to be I, mean, I don't know I only assumed this was the way it was that some of the tests required you to take a certain action Yeah. so that was player agency you got to decide and some of the tests were basically make a dice roll I, I think yeah yeah, essentially yeah um, and I kind of again and for that to again I was using um, some stuff from DM's Guild that kind of reworked that section a little bit um, okay because they make a lot less sense in the original book um, okay <laughs> <laughs> okay so, uh, so my an observation as a player if ever there's a situation where a quest effectively stands or falls on the basis of a few dice um, rolls where I have yeah. no really I mean I, make I, I have to do something and it's obvious it. yeah make three con saves you pass you succeed fail on any of them oh sorry you failed uh, that is not fun yeah 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 but it, that didn't cause a roadblock for us it added tension yeah a couple of them are really good tests a couple of them are just kind of yeah mm, roll yeah. and succeed then we move the action on to we, you cross the rest of the north and head to the glacier to open up the the, the, the gap in the glacier with this rhyme of the frost maiden that you've got Whilst being pursued by O'Reel um, and her minions, um, there's a fight. That was quite a good yeah, combat. Yeah, that was, that was quite yeah. a good combat. There's a big fight that, that you can't necessarily win. Um, and it's a case of let's run and, and get this thing open, which then moves you into the caverns of something. Um, caverns of despair, I want to say, but that's not what it's called. Um, <laughs> I was desperately looking for a ship called Esperanto. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Sorry, Red Dwarf reference. Yes, yeah, indeed. Um, which is a which, yeah, the which is a dungeon crawl um, with you know a big bad behind you, so you've got to keep going essentially. Which, if you fail to take down in any single round of combat, disappears, comes back again. To oh, the extra. So there's the big bad of Oriel behind you. There's the time sensitive. Oh right, yeah. Of this dungeon oh, sorry. who's chasing you. And then there's also a a null vampire in there, which is a fantastic enemy to play to run as a DM, because he harries the party all the way through essentially until the kind of the final showdown um, turns into mist and disappears in cracks in the ice, etc. And always comes in on the end of another combat. Um, and there's the book suggests places for him. You can to see how in. much I liked him. Um, I th and I th but I think I think with your DM's head on, you thought it was really good, right? You thought that oh, was a yeah. good, a good enemy. <coughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. I, <laughs> I, I, I like nothing more than torturing my players, having them hunted through a. And, uh, this is why I like the alien role playing game. But it was very much like oh, <laughs> there was a, when we finally killed. There was the satisfaction of killing yeah, that thing, yeah. and like, oh, can you, 
Um, so yeah, from that perspective, it works. From a DM's perspective, it's like <laughs> I get to have a Gygaxian sort of. And you, evil, you did. Uh, you, you went through possibly one third of those caverns. There was a lot more. Yeah. There was other places to go. There's, you know, you were lucky to not encounter the Remoraz and her family, um, because that that would have just TPK'd the party. And what do you do then? Because you're in the middle of nowhere. How do you bring in another party at that point? Um, it was a bit like there's a safe route which you fairly much managed. There were some tricky encounters in there, but you <laughs> went one of the safer yeah, yeah. routes through the caverns. Um, there's some there was some dark elves, um, some drow, sorry, who didn't really show up. They were hinted at by another NPC that you met, um, but there's a whole section with them. So there's there's plenty of scope in there for different things. Yeah. I guess my issue is it's still you. The party feels they're on by this time feels they're on a very time sensitive mission, so they don't feel like they've got time to hang around. They don't feel like they've got time to rest. Um, yeah, and it becomes very difficult for them to manage their resources. And that's the, it, the, so. Yeah, that it became a grind. Yeah, yeah. And it just it just seemed like it just seemed like it was there to to put an obstacle in the way of the party. Um, We've reviewed another product which kind of did the same thing. Um, it just felt like it's there. Oh, this, you know, they've got to get from here to here, but we can't have it a straight shot. Let's put some things in the way. Yes. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing wrong with throwing obstacles at your players when mm. they think that, they're, you know, particularly when they've been a bit smug and thought, oh, we've taken down a Shardling Dragon very quickly yeah. and, you know, we've taken out a Forest Giant and, you know, we. We may have run from Alril, but we didn't have to wipe out most of our forces. Yes, yeah. Um, so yeah, this has been very tricky. Uh, it's just because it's a it's a it's a misbeat. It is, yeah. It is a, but, and and then we that leads into a tunnel that leads to the lost city of Ithrin, which is this Netherese city that, that fell into the ice two thousand years ago and has been entombed in the glacier ever since. Um, where there's this um, MacGuffin called the Mithalar which is the thing that allows the cities to fly, but it has the power to, for you to cast a control weather spell with a range of, with a, um, area of effect of 50 miles, um, a super-powered control weather spell that can end the, the, the frost, essentially. Um, uh, or at least counterbalance yeah, it, isn't it? Yeah. You've kind of got to, you've got to, you've got to kill Howril, or but to, temporarily to, kill Howril. To get into well. the, yeah, you've got to, you've got to, yeah, you've got to, deal with her as well still and to get into the tower where the Mithalar is um, you have to you have to perform a ritual with eight steps in it and each step is contained within the tower of one of the schools of magic so this is where the fetch quest comes in it's uh, go to this school find out what the what the what the riddle is and one of them is quite naughty um, because, because one of them is in the school of illusion so it's yeah, and one of them's on a broken tower. You know, there's there's extra obstacles in the way. It's not just a straight fetch quest, but it fairly is a straight fetch quest as well. Um, so how did you feel as a player? Because I felt again that the party thought they had less time than they did. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it felt like a sort of. Oh really? A fetch quest at this point? I mean, I'm sorry. I'm, fetch quests are not necessarily my favourite. <laughs> um, some of those were really good, but there were so many of them. It was like, well, we have to go to all of these. Yeah. Really? After we've just been through that long, oh, you know, it, it was way too grindy. Yes. But. Yeah, because of course it's a city, and there's not a huge amount of role playing with any NPCs. I mean, there are NPCs. Yeah, it's not. It's not like being in a sit living city. I think we probably missed a trick with the the lich. Yeah, there's the also an insane lich, lich whatever it is. an insane demi lich, um, who was the ruler of the city, who, who is there to either harry the character. I was going crazy at the point him, where. Um, yeah. yeah, some of those quests. Some of those quests are really good. Some of those little fetch quests yeah. are, are really nice little quests. Um, I particularly like the one with the crawling claws, with the the necromancy tower, where it's kind of like there's the ghost of the of the wizard, the archmage who ran it, and the information is all buried, and you've got to basically recover his body. Which, which, which was which was the tower where our player, one of the the player who 
so often plays a magic user, and I so often say you shouldn't play a magic user, dude. <laughs> Fireballed the party. Oh, that was that was the that was the first one. I think. That was the aberration. yeah. There we are, all in the tower. <laughs> all in the all in the sixty foot one. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yes. Um, so anyway. Some of them are really good. Some of them are really frustrating. The Tower of Illusions is really frustrating um, as a to run as well because I could see how frustrated my players were getting with it. Um, that was the one with the mist. I- Again, because a failed saving throw basically became out, a roadblock. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, so, yeah, there isn't necessarily anything wrong in some games with a single dice roll being life or death. But if it's. Like, surely there should be another way round. Yeah, and it was also a very high DC. Maybe I could have, you know, if I ran, it, if I ran that section again, I maybe changed I, the DC you, or offer some other way round. <laughs> Uh, there's yeah, but the, this whole section was quite frustrating to just build up to a denouement with with two two big battles back to back essentially. So there is an NPC that's there that comes along as well, um, um, who was introduced earlier, a member of the Arcane Brotherhood. She's the one who TPK'd us. The one who TPK'd them previously, who has their own mission. Um, you know, they're after a certain artifact. They don't really care what the party's up to as long as they don't get in the way. So the party did well negotiating with with them and working with them rather than getting into a big fight with them again. Um, she may have won that time, to be fair. So then there's um, the the moment where they get through to the Bithalar and start to to um, attune to it. The insane Demi Lich turns up and tries to stop them. So there's a fight with the Demi Lich, um, which you guys again handled really really well. Uh, it took a couple of people down pretty quickly but then I think it was a uh, conjure animals and <laughs> yeah. dragged it well the Mythalar destroys anything that touches they, it they, they <laughs> had found out that the Mythalar destroys anything that touches it so they conjured some, some giant apes to push it into the Mythalar essentially um, ingenious use of, of, of a spell because when you understand how magic works never never <laughs> ever a spell like conjure animals it's very very useful yeah yeah absolutely uh, and then, that's the trick, and then O'Reel it? turns up, um, and there's the fight against her three forms. Um, I mean, you did really well with the first form because you essentially dropped the city on her. So that, I'm not sure how much that's foreseen in the book as a possible player decision. But you give us a control of a flying <laughs> yeah. city. We're like, well, we're go- we're going to bounce it up and down till it breaks free. And once we finally reach that point, well, we're going to try. Right, yeah. let's let's create a trap for her because she doesn't know that this is a. We've got control of it, presumably. How would she know? She's a demigod. She's not all knowing. She's not. And, and as you say, so yeah. we waited. We 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 trapped her. Used, um, rope trick yeah. to be able to wasn't it yeah. to be able to climb into this extra dimensional space and then drop the city through the extra. Di- it was like not from the extra dimensional space, but for, it was it was a very well worked out plan. And again, as a DM, I'm like, I'm, I'm going to let this, I'm going to yeah. let this ride. This is a good plan, you know. I, yeah. I, you, one one flat yeah. one flat uh, frost maiden, but not for and long. And then there's two more forms to fight, and it, it was a little clutch, I think, the, the fight at the end. Um, well, I mean, you were right. some people didn't lose a hit. Some people didn't lose a single hit point in that fight. Yeah, and again, if, if, you, if you're tactically sound by this point, you're high enough level that it's not actually too much of a problem. Um, yeah. I thought, I thought. Yeah, if you're just going to stand back and throw the same spell at it or country back at it over and over again, yeah. you're not going to live. But if you're going to tactically use all your resources. Yeah. Uh, I, I thought, I thought the end. I thought we had a good climax to the adventure. Yeah. Um, to the to the campaign. It ended on a high it point. It did end sure. on a high point. The last, I'd say, the last two sessions were really, really good. Um, possibly the six or seven sessions before that were the low point of the campaign. I think that the they created part. friction between uh, we, we as players had friction between yeah. us, which is not. Mm, I'm not saying it never occurs, but it's not a normal feature of our no. gaming group. So that gives you a, an idea that it, how frustrating it was. There, there was interpersonal friction between players, yes, there with was. no external cause. 
it was the game. Yeah, it was, that's not your fault, but it's the modules. It was, it was the modules, for um, it, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I'd go along with that. Um, you know, I'm happy to hold my hand up when I make a mistake or or cause something to happen within a party, and I, it was the module. Um, yeah. You know, so this is um, this is a this is a it's a decent module. I think it's interesting. Like, what rating am I going to give it? Because the the setting and the sandbox part and the side quests are amazing. Some of the best stuff that I think Wizards of the Coast have produced, like hands down, from all the from all the modules I've played and read, some of the best stuff they've done, particularly for five for fifth edition. I, I would say up until if the if the campaign had simply been to take out the Shardling Dragon up to that point, yeah. It was the crit. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It was heartbreaking to have lost all like nine of the ten towns by our own choice to some extent, but to have saved the people that was like uh, that was amazing. I, I would have been happy with that going on a bit longer with the side. And that's a that's a classic. The ten towns. That's a classic no win situation in a way, isn't it? There was no way you could save yeah. all of the towns. It was and it was a hard decision for the for the characters, but for the players to make. It was it was a tough decisions yeah, yeah. for them to make at, at that time. Um, we, we we tried all sorts of like recruiting the insane white dragon. Yeah, ancient white dragon didn't work. They um, tried I think lying. We might have let it work. They tried we, lying we didn't, it to didn't the work. dragon. They. <laughs> Somebody tried lying to the dragon. <laughs> yes. I, I didn't have the chance to talk to it because my cla my my evil character would have been like oh, the loot. Yeah. I mean the greater good. <laughs> um, Power. Oh, I sorry. think I think I, if I. If, when I run it again, I will run that sandbox bit for much longer, adapt some of those side quests so they're suitable for higher levels, and just keep the party going with the Shardle and Dragon bit till they're um, a high enough level to just go and take O'Reilly out on the island. And and that's it, that's done. That's that's the line broken. I wouldn't, so you, I wouldn't bother with... You cut, you... If if the limb would just go, I wouldn't bother with the caves. I wouldn't bother with Ithrin. I just wouldn't bother with them. I may use them. I may crib them for a setting for some other module. Um, Interesting. The so I le I left it quite open at the end. I did a little kind of epilogue after we finished of what <laughs> happens afterwards, and I did leave it open ended um, for perhaps some other netherese shenanigans to occur. Um, that yes. was a little, a little narrative, just input of mine. There was no player input to that. I was like, "Well, this is what happened to you guys afterwards." I just set it up for possibly returning to the the, <laughs> the only mistake you made in that was that when when the op op option to be recruited to work for the, for the villain <laughs> yeah. was 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 there, I didn't have an employee. I was playing a quite mercenary. Yeah. Ranger and I'd have been like, yeah, yeah, yeah okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. screw these guys. I'm going with you. you are. <laughs> but apart from that, no, it was awesome actually. Um, and, and maybe we'll return to yeah, it. Yeah, and um, so I think. What's the what's the what's the rating overall? It's not crit and miss because no. although there are elements that are crit and miss, the overall thing is is surely it's, just. It's definitely good crit overall. It's pulling itself yeah. into the crit. Um, there's some good NPCs. But, there's some good extra monsters. There's some really. Nice extra spells, magic items. You know that will be useful in any in any game, in any campaign, yeah. um, particularly one set. And in, in, you know, I could see a lot of it being transferred into some areas of Eberron, that kind of thing. Um, so the content is really good. The production value is really good. Uh, yeah, I think we you might have taken some footage of like yeah, yeah, we'll, images we'll of the. Images you've probably already seen them. them. We'll have already put them in because it's half an hour in, and that's a bit late. So yeah, so, <laughs> to show you things. so the begin, the begin, essentially the beginning is the crit. Um, it yeah. then goes to crit and miss, 100%. And, and and then there's a whole lot of of not very good. Um, it's not it, crit. Yeah, there's a whole lot of crit and miss. It never goes. It never goes down below crit and miss, yeah. which is our three out of five, yeah. if you like. It never goes below. And that, then it pulls itself back up medal. again right at the end. So, yeah, it pulls itself up to sort of silver medal, medal territory, and then right at the end into back into that gold yeah. medal territory, so, back into the crit. So, so yeah, good it's crit overall. Good crit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's a year's worth of gaming. Yeah. So, or maybe right, if you're playing every week, it's six months worth of gaming. That's a good investment. Uh, so, yeah. 
value for money. Definitely. Um, which isn't always, which I'm sorry, isn't always the case with Wizards of the Coast. No, no, indeed. Um, they, some of the, this is it. one of this is one of their best modules. Certainly for fifth yeah. edition, it really is. Um, there's a couple of others that I really like, but this is this is one of the best. There is a new module, not a not a reinterpretation of something old. That they've that they've kind of updated for fifth edition. So yeah, it's it's good crit. You will enjoy running it. You will enjoy playing it. There will be moments where you think, "Oh my god, is this ever going to end?" <laughs> just like this video. <laughs> and just like this video, and we will leave you with those thoughts. If you've played or run Icewind Dale, let us know what you think. Is this a fair review? Yeah. Have we been a bit mean on it? Um, did you really? Maybe enjoy you it? loved the dungeon. Yeah, maybe yeah. you really enjoyed the dungeon. Maybe you loved casting fireball at the uh, <laughs> your own party. So yeah, sorry, as, sorry, as sorry. always, like, subscribe, leave a comment below, um, and we'll get back to you soon with some more reviews. Thank you for sticking with us. Chill out. Sit here. <laughs>